In lesson 1.4, you'll make a little boat out of paper, place it in water, and add pennies to it until it sinks. And the question for students is, how could they redesign that boat so that it could hold the most pennies before sinking? Students will use some of the knowledge they've gained from the last couple of lessons about the different properties of paper, plastic, and aluminum foil. They'll see that they can add aluminum foil and plastic to the paper to make it stronger, less absorbent, and hold more pennies before sinking. Let's take a look. So the first thing you'll do is help students fold paper and use tape in order to make a boat. And there's an animation to help show students how to do that. In the lesson, there's a template for making the boat. Each student group will get one, and you can show them how to fold it in order to make a four-sided square boat. First. You fold along the dotted lines on the outside of the boat. Then you open those up and fold the diagonal dotted line at the corners. Then you take that folded corner and kind of bring it over to the side and then tape it in place. And here's where you can stop and put your boat in water and add pennies to it to see what happens. So you can put your boat in the water and begin adding pennies one at a time. You don't wanna add them on top of each other necessarily. I mean, you don't stack them in a tall column. You can just spread them out in the boat so that it stays kind of balanced. And you don't wanna add them really, really quickly because you actually want the boat, the paper of the boat to absorb water and to eventually sink under the weight of the pennies. And in this case, the number of pennies is about 40 before it sinks. So then you would ask students, what could we add to the boat? Or how could we change the boat so that it could hold more pennies before sinking? And you want kids to say, maybe we could cover it with something to prevent it from absorbing water so they could think back at the materials that they've used before that did not absorb water, like plastic and aluminum foil, and figure out a way to cover the boat with those. So let's see what that might be like. So after students have already seen your demonstration of the boat absorbing water and sinking, you can show them the next part of the animation, which reviews the sinking boat, that the paper of the boat absorbed water and sunk under the weight of the pennies. And you've already had a discussion about how you might improve the boat by adding non-absorbent material like paper or plastic. So this animation just shows the idea that you could add plastic on the outside. You could also add aluminum foil over that to hold the plastic even better. So after students have modified their paper boat, by adding plastic and aluminum foil, they can test it themselves in water. So here, students would be adding pennies to the modified boat, and you can add many, many more than you could before. It's more than twice as many. I think we got 80, uh, between 80 and 100 pennies before the boat sunk. And basically, it got so heavy that it went below the water line and sunk. It really was not caused by absorbing water into the material. So students will definitely see that different substances have characteristic properties that make them well suited for certain purposes. And in this case, paper would be probably a bad choice for a boat because it's too absorbent. But if you wanted to cover your paper, with a non-absorbent material like plastic or aluminum foil, it would work a lot better. And of course, you could have the discussion with students that boats are made from material that does not absorb water. For the NGSS standard 2 PS12, analyze data obtained from testing different materials to determine which materials have the properties that are best suited for an intended purpose. Well, this lesson clearly supports that standard by having students see you do a demonstration with a paper boat and then using knowledge they've gained from other lessons to use other material, plastic, aluminum foil, that are non-absorbent to improve the performance of the boat. If you look at the foundation boxes, science and engineering practices, planning and carrying out investigations, 
plan and conduct an investigation collaboratively to produce data to serve as the basis for evidence to answer a question. Well, in this case, the data that students collect is the number of pennies that you used before the boat absorbed water and sank. It was a lowish number, maybe 40 pennies. And then students modify the boat by putting on plastic and aluminum foil and add pennies. They see that the boat can hold a far greater number of pennies before it sinks. And that's their data in this case. And they use it to answer the question of what materials are best suited for a particular purpose. For disciplinary core ideas, structure and properties of matter, that different properties are suited to different purposes, the lesson definitely deals with that disciplinary core idea in that students see that different substances are suited for a particular purpose. For cross-cutting concepts, cause and effect, that simple tests can be designed to gather evidence to support or refute student ideas about causes. In this case, the simple tests are the comparing of the boat made out of paper with a boat made out of paper with a covering of plastic and aluminum foil. And students see that by covering the boat with non-absorbent material causes the boat to perform much better, hold much more weight before it sinks. So thanks for listening and watching, and good luck with the lesson.